Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwigland and I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to look at the tangle Trimons by CZT Jane Monk. Now, this is a grid pattern, but it is on the diagonal. So I'm going to put in my four corners just because I want to. And a little crazy border. All right. So, on the diagonal, and now I suppose, although it seems like this one, sometimes when I say like a, like it's on the, it's on the on the diamond, like on the angle, you could like do a straight straight grid, you know, like say 90 degrees from where you want it, and then turn it and then it's like, "Oh, look at it, it's a diamond." But this one, it seems to be it's more Oh, I don't know what, how to say. It, it, when I look at the, well, let me just show you. When I look at, at, when I make the grid kind of go square, all of the 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 squares are kind of slid to the side. So, all right. So I think I want mine to be this away. All right. So what I'm going to do is starting anywhere, and I'm trying to make these bigger than I need to. Just because, otherwise, you will be suffering with me for <laughs> for a while. All right, so on the diagonal, and I'm going to just kind of turn it a little bit, and um, let's see if I can get this how I want it. Yeah. And then about here. And, you know, and quite honestly, however you get it, however you do it, it's going to be fine. But you see, so if I if I have it showing, yeah, like, you know, a square grid, then, because they're just a little bit taller, I guess is what I want to say. And there's a reason for that. So to have that kind of an angle, although I haven't messed with it the other way just to see how it would work, but I do know that no matter how you end up doing your grid, um, you know, whether it's like, you know, they're, they're tall diamonds like this or just, um, you know, or if they're a little bit, um, you know, not so much tall, <laughs> you know, when you end up with the final product, it's going to look amazing. All right. So, but this is just something that I noticed in, uh, in, uh, Jane's pattern. So that's why I want to mention it. All right. So the next step is we're going, to, we're going to divide all of these diamonds in half, making triangles. Ooh, that looks really nice. And what I recommend is going intersection to intersection to intersection. So that way, if your grid, because we're doing this freehand, right? Um, no rulers, no... Uh, you see no grid paper behind here. You watched me draw the grid. Um... So this, in my mind, makes it a little forgiving. So that way, if your grid isn't like mine. So, so if I was looking looking at all of these, it's like, look at how uneven those are. But it's all okay. All right. Next step. We're only going to focus right now on, so however you're looking at your um, at your pattern, the diamond, or the diamonds, oh my goodness, the triangles that are like this with the, you know, the, the um, wide edge on the bottom. Okay, so like that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put a dot in a couple of them in the center. And if you want to do this, it might help you with the next step. I know it helps me. I did not put this in the step out. Um, I have done that on some step outs that do, do a similar uh, stroke to this within diamonds. Okay, and I'm leaving the, the little partials uh, empty just for now. So our next step, it, whether you do this dot or not, this just might help. But we're going to take from the uh, from each corner and have them meet in the center, like so. So it might help you to put that dot already in the center, and then it just it becomes part of you know what you're doing. So it's okay. For me, it just helps me kind of judge the distance versus um, you know just drawing it and then going. All right, and so in each, and, and again, so as you see, we're we're skipping the upside down triangles. That's what I'm going to call them. 
and we do have a use for those uh, at the end. Okay, so I have all my full ones. So now for the partial ones, if you end up doing something like I'm doing here, then you just kind of have to envision, well, where, okay, so like this one will come down maybe about here. Okay, that looks good. And you just have to kind of guess, like there's probably where that dot would be. And a lot of times I, I wait till the end to do this part because having done it so many times, you get, you get a, a good feel for, um, for that step and it makes it a little bit easier to do it. And then that could go up. And I also do find it important, you know, even just if it's just a little bit, like even right here, I'm going to put a line going down there because it matters in my book anyway. To me, I, well, I call it, it makes it look convincing. Like as if we, we, um, we had this border and we laid it upon something that um, was already there, you know, a pattern that was already there. So, all right. Next step is... We are going to do some fill-in, so I'm grabbing my Graphic One pen. Uh, I was using the O one, and see, this one is a little bit thicker, but it kind of comes to a point. It's not quite a brush tip. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to fill in the left-hand sides of this. And I'm trying to be careful because the challenge with, you know, with using the thicker tip is... You know, at the edges, it almost have to. Well, oh, I think I think I can get that. I'll, I'll adjust it if need be with the fine pen. So that yeah, the challenge with this is so like getting in the corners because it's a thicker tip. You can't really get into those corners very well because it's a thicker tip. It just makes sense. So what I try to do is leave the like leave leave the little gaps and things. Sometimes I maybe not I don't go to the edge. Just depends if I'm being careful or not. <laughs> and you know, if I if it uh, does get a little sloppy, then what I will end up doing is actually and this is what helps a whole lot if I would just do it is uh tracing those edges first. You know, on the inside so that way I'm not making them any thicker. But that does seem to help. But you see like a little bump like that. I'll just take my 01 and uh, just run it along that, that side. And it will fix it all up. All right. Okay. Oh, oh. Just this one here. Okie dokie. Now let me just touch those couple of guys up. And see, like even here, it's just like just see running that running that line. So right, even right here, just like re going over it, and not too far because we don't want to make it too wide. But you can kind of just eke that out just a smidge, and it seems to help. So let's get to these corners here. Alrighty. Oh, and there was that little piece. <laughs> this little piece okay now next step is so the bottoms of these triangles we're going to add graphite and you can you know, let's say add, add as much or as little as you want and then I'm going to um, follow up with the tortillon so you can kind of be a little sloppy as long as you stay within the lines <laughs> telling myself this Oops, let me a little bit more there. Okay. And um, and then being careful also because it's like I want to stay within those lines and I just but I just want to smudge the um, the graphite out just a bit to even it out, number one. Makes it nice and a nice solid gray color. I suppose you could kind of play with this too, so you could add like not so much graphite maybe um, and have a lighter gray or you know. Um, you could probably just play with that, that density. But again, just being careful. Then, last step with this one. Oops. Going back to my 01. And this one. Okay, I may hit pause. 
But this last step, we're going to just put some lines in. So the, now we're working on those big triangles that we didn't work, the, kind of the upside down triangles. We're going to put um, just some straight lines. And this is a way of shading without, um, what do they call it? is it hashing? Whenever I say that, I want to say, hat. it's like, no, it's not hashtagging. Uh, but that's what goes in my head, so I think I have it wrong. But I think it's just, it's hash, or it's making hash marks. And so you could also play with this part, although I'm not necessarily being very consistent in mine at the moment. Um, let me move my hand here. Get the paper to, the paper. Get my little bijou tile to stay put. But you could play with how far apart these are or how narrow and then that will also you know affect the the look this one too just have to be careful um, in starting and stopping the lines which that's a, something that I'm famous uh, for is going over so all that that tells you know when I do something like this it's like I just have to, I have to keep reminding myself to slow down take a breath just watch the pen going from one side to the other and then I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, channel my inner Maria <laughs> and um, and be light with the pen because that kind of gives it a neat look when you're light with it and it then it also doesn't um, then it doesn't have to be necessarily straight because it's like when when it's just light sometimes just like letting the pen bounce across the page it kind of gives it a little bit of a, a wiggle or something. I don't know how to describe it, but um, it's different than when you, you put your pen down and you make a deliberate stroke. Just a little bit different. All right. Okay. Well, I got to get these little parcels here. And you can see already how that is just making the whole design uh, have dimension. It's not, it's like pop isn't even the word. Um, let's see. Okay. It would be right here. So then if you're doing these little partials, just have to be careful to make sure like even right here, it would be these little marks and I want to make sure to get them all where they're supposed to be. And even right here, oops. And right here. All right. Oh goodness. Well, we have loudness outside. I hope that you can't hear that. We, um, well, we'll see if uh, if if uh, this is posted without all the prettiness uh, that I usually try to do. If if this one looks inconsistent to my other videos, it's because we don't have power at the moment, and so I am I'm working by uh, battery operated lights and my phone, and so the windows are open because it's uh, it's kind of warm here, and so then the hot rodders are of course out making noise. So anyway, is that just not amazing or what? It, the, the on um Jane's blog she says the shading makes all the difference and it really really does and having you know these uh this uh these uh uh hash hash marks um just yeah it makes it makes all the difference now I can't help but wonder and I'm sure somebody will try um and maybe somebody that's on our Facebook community um cuz I'm wondering hmm does it have to be lines I don't know. Could it be little orbs if you dig making orbs and want to try that? Hmm, it would be really interesting. I also can't help but wonder if you did, um, so if, say even if you wanted to, to do color. Um, so what this does, it, it's a little bit different. It, it, it creates a little bit different shading, right, than this. So but if you had, um, so black, uh, one shade of gray and a darker shade of gray, that could be, you know, it seems like that could also be effective. So this might be one to have fun playing with. And, um, but it just, it, it just looks like all of these are sunk down into the paper and it's just so amazing. It, I, I get so thrilled whenever I do one like this, cause it's like, wow, look at what I did. That's just so cool. And, and, you know, and, and I give complete kudos to, um, to, uh, Jane and, and those that uh, come up with these tangles, um, and also do them well enough with the instructions that uh, we can follow along, us Narn artists. So with that, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, would love to have a thumbs up. 
And if you liked it enough to see more and you're not subscribed to the channel yet, would love to have you subscribe. If you do, make sure you hit the notification bell next to it so that way you can decide how you want to be notified and if you want to be notified because there is like a none. And I know I have that selected on most of mine because I, I just like to go, I don't like things popping up on my phone and, and kind of junking up my email. So um, I just... I like it when I like to be subscribed to things so that way I can see when there's new content and it rises to the top when you go to YouTube. So and and look at your subscription. So uh, also in the description box and we'll see because I've committed myself to, to doing uh, a daily tangle and this is it. Um, and so we'll we'll see what I can get uploaded. I will have I will have this uploaded one way or another. Um, I will have links in the description to a step out. If it's not my own, it will be uh, to Jane's blog, and I will just fill in later, and um, you know, and get mine as soon as we get our power back and stuff. And there's also ways to connect with me on Facebook. And if you if you're on Facebook and want to join our Tangle Addicts community, would love to have you. We have a lot of fun. Uh, on my website uh, there, I also have links to classes. I do some free classes, um, actually weekly, and uh, and also some paid classes that are a little bit uh, more in-depth on things. So with that, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Happy tangling.